the uh, coronavirus outbreak will be a very serious test of global supply chains. Uh, serious demand shocks, slowing down one of the most important economies in uh, the world right now, uh, and some uh, serious constraints both on the production and supply side, and uh, of course some inefficiencies on the logistics side uh, will accentuate uh, the impact of this type of a pandemic on the global supply chains. It is very hard for us to find a benchmark that we can reliably use to estimate the impact of this kind of an effect. And of course, as you understand, the global supply chains are highly interconnected systems of suppliers, factories, uh, logistics activities, uh, distribution and uh, retailers, all of them spreading all over the world. And uh, as we know, these kind of shocks in the system propagate and they get amplified as they move up backwards into the supply chain, or if it's a supply constraint, as they move forward into the supply chain. The benchmark that people are trying to use is what happened with uh, SARS 2002-2003 uh, and the impact on global supply chains, which was not as significant. Uh, at that point in time, the estimated impact was around $40 billion. In today's dollars, will be around $60 billion. But we got to remember that at that point in time, 2002-2003, China represented a uh, very... Um, uh, a smaller percentage of uh, the global economy. The uh, Chinese economic output was 1.7 trillion, and today it is uh, close to 14 trillion dollars. Uh, at that point in time, it represented 5% uh, of the global trade, with now closer to 14 or 15%. Uh, the GDP uh, in China per person was around 1,500 dollars, now it's 9,000 dollars. So, if you want to use the numbers and try to somewhat extrapolate from that, you got not only to account for how significant is China in the global economy, but also you have to think about it from a supply base, how we use it. It has always been a manufacturing hub, a significant manufacturing hub, but at that point in time was mostly for commodity goods, uh, textiles, t-shirts, shoes, and now it is a significant supplier on technology goods uh, like uh, uh, chips and uh, other electronics or uh, even active ingredients uh, for pharmaceuticals, and at the same time it used uh, for a higher margin products. So, uh, if I have to make a guess, I would say whatever was the SARS impact in 2002-2003, the $60 billion, multiplied uh, somewhere between uh, five and seven times. So, if you want to be conservative, you got to expect around $300 billion impact. And, of course, uh, that is based on the information that I have today, uh, which is uh, the February 5th of uh, 2020. Uh, this is a very good question, and uh, in order to answer, we got to look at where is really the source of this outbreak, and this is uh, Wuhan, uh, in the Hubei province. And uh, that uh, area in China is uh, often called the Detroit of uh, China. Uh, car manufacturing is, uh, is extremely important for that area. They are producing over 2 million passenger cars, uh, a year with a lot of suppliers around that are producing hundreds of millions of parts. So the uh, car industry, the auto industry is going to feel the impact uh, the first, I believe. And we have already seen it. Uh, it was a recent announcement uh, yesterday, uh, February 4th, uh, that uh, Hyundai uh, had to uh, slow down or shut down its factory in South Korea due to the exposure of uh, part shortages uh, mostly caused uh, by suppliers that were around the Wuhan region. Uh, we have major uh, car manufacturers, uh, both uh, American and European and uh, Japanese that are based there. Uh, Hyundai and Honda are there, uh, GM is, uh, Ford is, uh, and, uh, and of course uh, the European manufacturers uh, have uh, both factories and suppliers in that region. So definitely is an industry that is going to feel the impact. Uh, hopefully not immediately, we're hoping that there's some inventory in the system, uh, but uh, if that continues uh, for another two, three weeks, uh, I wouldn't uh, be surprised if I hear that there's a Toyota factory in Kentucky that uh, has part shortages 
or are there factories in Germany that uh, suddenly are affected uh, by exposure to part shortages? Uh, then uh, we got to think about it uh, that now, and everybody talks about it, uh, how many of our electronic products, our smartphones and tablets and computers are made in China and uh, there are lots of suppliers uh, that are based in that region and other parts of China as well, as the outbreak uh, is affecting them, uh, will contribute uh, to disruptions in uh, the electronic supply chain and even going uh, uh, backwards, uh, we're talking about semiconductors and chips that are components that are going into many of these electronic products will also be significantly affected. When you start thinking about companies in those industries, obviously Apple, uh, we do know that uh, has one-sixth of its sales in China and the assembly of uh, smartphones happens in Shenzhen uh, through Foxconn and uh, uh, labor and availability if the outbreak continues for a period of time is going to affect the company for sure. Uh, thinking about uh, a significant uh, demand shock, if you are uh, Qualcomm and you are selling 50% uh, of uh, your chips in China, this is something you have to immediately consider. Uh, the <clears throat> Uh, pharmaceutical industry, the pharmaceutical supply chains will be affected and mostly because almost 80% of active ingredients uh, for many pharmaceutical companies are coming from Chinese suppliers and that would be an immediate exposure due to labor unavailability or uh, potentially factories uh, that are in that region. And that uh, all of us will feel it uh, if you are uh, taking uh, blood pressure medication uh, or uh, depression uh, medication or uh, uh, pre-diabetic uh, drugs. Uh, then uh, medical equipment and devices, uh, both in terms of sales as well as uh, uh, quite a lot of production. If you are uh, general electric uh, and making ultrasound and x-ray equipment, uh, some of your facilities are around uh, that region. Uh, something that is, should be immediately obvious uh, by all, the airlines have stopped uh, flights to China and from China, so the airline traffic is going to be affected a lot, their sales are going to go down depending on how long this is going to last. Some of them are planning not to have any flights uh, until the end of March, so we're talking about significant reduction in uh, air traffic that will affect not only domestic airlines, but also it will affect uh, the uh, global uh, international airlines that, uh, that we all know. Uh, when your customers uh, start sneezing, uh, if you are sitting at the back of these supply chains uh, and uh, you are making planes, you are going to feel it. Uh, definitely not great news for either Boeing or Airbus. And if you are sitting behind Boeing and Airbus and you are selling engines and all other kind of uh, components and parts, you are going to feel it and feel it at a more significant level. So the aerospace industry for sure is going to be affected uh, through uh, this kind of an effect. Um, finally, an industry that we all love to talk about is uh, toys and uh, quite a lot of the plastic products uh, around it. Uh, that will be affected as well because of exposure to suppliers and manufacturing in that area. Even though probably that industry is more well diversified, they might be able to take this, the uh, uh, shock. And uh, the good news is that shock is happening after the uh, Christmas uh, holiday uh, season in the Western world. Uh, but uh, we shouldn't forget uh, service supply chains. The service supply chains will have the immediate impact. You have to imagine that uh, all the shopping malls in China are empty, so the retailers are immediately affected. Uh, all of the travel-related services obviously are going to be affected and the hospitality industry, uh, hotels and so on. And uh, also think about it, if you are Disney and you have to close down your theme park in Shanghai, uh, during the Lunar Festival, when during that week probably you make uh, double the usual sales uh, than you do in a, any other week. Um, and definitely any retailer, their expectations was that they were going to sell uh, 30 to 40 percent more during the one or two weeks around the Lunar Festival. And that is a significant uh, hit on their sales and of course implications for anyone that supplies to these type of service industries. Well, there are multiple uh, demand shocks as a result of uh, the coronavirus outbreak. Uh, there are some uh, immediate that we can all uh, see. 
starting with uh, airline traffic uh, that uh, has stopped uh, quite a lot of the flights and uh, all the other transportation uh, that is happening uh, via uh, rail and uh, uh, even uh, some of the ports are affected. So you have uh, these uh, immediate effects uh, on demand of uh, transportation services and uh, airline traffic. Uh, which is going to be felt. Uh, we all know that it takes a little while for airline traffic uh, to recover after uh, these kind of uh, serious effects. Uh, that has an immediate impact uh, for uh, tourism. Uh, uh, you can think about it especially happening around the Lunar Festival. There's uh, tourism within China that got uh, heavily affected. People are moving around, either visiting their families or uh, are trying to take advantage of the one to two week um, <coughs> a holiday uh, period uh, that uh, they tend to enjoy around the Lunar Festival. Uh, from a retail perspective, uh, uh, you are going to have the shopping malls uh, that are uh, closing down uh, and uh, there are going to be heavy effect on uh, retail sales. Uh, then you have a lot of companies, uh, especially international companies that they to try to, uh, that you've tried in the past take advantage of the major cities in China to expand uh, their stores and now they're forced uh, to uh, at least temporarily close them down. Uh, we hear that that happened with Apple, uh, that has closed uh, almost all of its stores uh, in China. Starbucks, I believe it's uh, half of the stores have been closed down, potentially more as, uh, as the outbreak uh, continues. I think the same thing for Ikea. Uh, McDonald's uh, had to close uh, uh, quite a lot of their stores and also Walmart closed uh, many of the stores uh, in, in China. Uh, that has an effect for sure on, uh, on their sales uh, and uh, the, the question is also could be there start rethinking uh, if uh, they would like to, to have all the, of, uh, of uh, the stores uh, in the current environment. Uh, so the tourism, uh, the reduced tourism, uh, which goes both ways, uh, people coming into China or the Chinese uh, going into other countries and the Chinese going into other countries is a major uh, tourism uh, revenue for uh, many countries, uh, countries like uh, Vietnam and Thailand, uh, South Korea or even Japan. Uh, so that uh, definitely is going to have an effect. It's not, uh, it's not clear how fast it's going to recover, but it has uh, an effect on, uh, on the travel-related and tourism-related uh, businesses, and that is quite significant. The, um, the importance is uh, you have an economy that slows down, and this is an economy that is an important economy for a lot of companies. If you are GM and uh, you are selling more cars in China than you are selling in the US, and definitely as we know, car manufacturing, uh, car sales in China, uh, it is the biggest market uh, uh, from, uh, from uh, the automotive perspective than any other market in the world. So many uh, car companies are going to be affected with that. Uh, Apple, uh, not only temporarily, there are some closure of sales, but uh, definitely might have an effect in uh, at least uh, this uh, fiscal year in terms of uh, the expected sales in China. And there are companies that I already mentioned, for example, if you're Qualcomm and 50% uh, of your sales are in China, and there's going to be a slowing down both of manufacturing as well as sales of some of the electronics products, that is going to seriously affect you. It is, um, it is a concern uh, that we have to think it a little more and you would like to connect what is really happening with uh, the trade deal that is there. Uh, you got to remember that uh, from February 14, uh, if the trade deal uh, comes into effect uh, between uh, US and uh, China, uh, there is an expectation that within uh, the next uh, two years, uh, China is going to buy $200 billion of American products with the slowing economy, will China be able to deliver on that promise? And if they don't deliver on that promise, then that means they're going to buy less soybeans and less cars and less planes and less industrial equipment, and that is going to propagate back into uh, the American supply chains. That's something we got to keep in mind. And of course, as we talked about it, uh, the airline traffic going down is going to affect uh, planes and the aerospace industry, and that is a very important industry uh, for, for many countries, including uh, the U.S. And uh, the, uh, the, the global uh, retailing effects uh, that will also manifest themselves within rather complex uh, supply chains. 
Uh, that is exactly the problem. These demand shocks that are starting, they are going to move back. And as we know, uh, in a supply chain lag goods is the bullwhip phenomenon that is going to take uh, in, in effect. And the whole idea of it is uh, that shock goes backwards into the supply chain, gets amplified. So the impact that uh, some suppliers and players further away from uh, the actual places where the demand shock is happening are going to feel some of the pain and actually at a much higher level than the actual immediate retailers or uh, uh, direct uh, original equipment manufacturers that are selling. So if uh, Caterpillar uh, starts uh, sneezing, uh, the suppliers of Caterpillar are going to catch a cold and might be a serious cold. The uh, obvious is that there's a closure of factories. Uh, it was anticipated a closure of factories in China for, for a week around the Lunar Festival. Now we know it's going to be at least another week, might be a few weeks where the government will force uh, that closure for reasons of preventing uh, the spread of uh, the coronavirus. And how long it is going to last, that is going to be a, a first uh, level uh, impact. Uh, the availability of labor. Is labor going to come back in certain regions where they think the outbreak might still be happening? Uh, that uh, can create shortages of labor. Uh, so there, we're losing some of the supply capacity uh, for suppliers and factories of uh, finished products. Uh, we're going to have to think some about it, uh, both uh, the electronics industry and the car parts are uh, supply bases. Uh, their supply bases are in China and they will uh, heavily uh, be affected. Uh, at the same time, logistics assets, some of the capacity is lost uh, because of closures of ports, uh, not having uh, the, uh, the level of, uh, of uh, air uh, uh, cargo that we used to have as the airlines are reducing the traffic in that region. Uh, the belly cargo of planes uh, is, is an, uh, a very important asset uh, for the global economy and definitely that is going to be reduced. And whenever capacity is reduced, uh, the rates go up and uh, delays in the whole uh, system uh, are going to happen. Um, the, uh, there is uh, some local transportation issues in that region and the countries around that region uh, with uh, also rail services have been uh, uh, substantially reduced and that will create extra delays and uh, uh, extra bottlenecks within the system and even a very simple uh, other uh, local uh, transportation assets uh, that will be unavailable uh, due uh, either uh, government um, uh, procedures or uh, for shutdowns uh, or in other cases uh, unavailability of labor. Uh, so for sure we're going to feel uh, these kind of shocks uh, in the system and uh, as usual uh, those uh, shocks and shortages will propagate. Uh, we started talking about it, how in the car industry, Hyundai announces that because of parts shortages uh, that are happening in China, they have to close down a uh, factory in South Korea. They will try to readjust and uh, start uh, shifting uh, some of their production capacity to other parts of the world, and they do have uh, uh, facilities in Turkey, uh, parts of uh, Eastern Europe, and other parts of uh, Southeast Asia. So it will happen, but it doesn't happen automatically. So everything depends how long it is going to be, the uh, situation and the severity of shortages uh, that are coming from China, and how much flexibility the global supply chains and uh, the, car and, uh, the car industry and the electronics industry they have in order to respond uh, to this kind of uh, shocks. But if you are talking about uh, something that sometimes we forget, uh, the supply chains within China right now are suffering and they are facing very serious shortages. Unfortunately, that's uh, healthcare related uh, supply chains. They're running out of uh, medical supplies. They're even running out of uh, masks uh, that are used uh, to try to prevent uh, the, uh, the outbreak. Uh, because of the shortages, they try to allocate the masks only to medical personnel and then uh, some of the other people that need it have a hard time to access it. And uh, uh, these uh, transportation uh, closures, uh, close downs, uh, this unavailability of logistic assets, some, uh, some of it for, some of it uh, due to unavailability or the willingness of people actually to provide the service is creating uh, serious problems uh, for patients reaching hospitals, uh, old people uh, being able uh, to move around uh, to, to get the services that they need. 
And uh, so they are kind of uh, very serious bottlenecks. Uh, some of those bottlenecks are in a highly bureaucratic kind of an environment, uh, especially in an environment that is uh, in crisis, uh, create further delays, uh, very slow response. Uh, so uh, right now, you see uh, heavily overloaded uh, healthcare facilities, uh, transportation resources, uh, medical supplies. And uh, as we know, systems that are heavily overloaded uh, as you add a little more load, they become extremely volatile and they are prone uh, to errors. So uh, there are shortages uh, coming our way. Uh, we haven't seen a lot of them. And uh, that's where is uh, the good news, bad news part of the story. The uh, good news is the outbreak happened around the Lunar Festival. And everybody expected a slowdown of a week to two weeks. And companies have carried inventories within their supply chains at much higher level than before. So they can withstand the shock for a few weeks, probably a month. But then after that, we will feel uh, really the pain of the shortages coming our way in all kinds of supply chains. Some of them might not be immediately important to us, but some might. Remember that the active ingredients of the majority of the drugs are coming from China. And that is a pain we will all feel, uh, both uh, in a metaphorical way, uh, but uh, also in the exact meaning of the word. Global supply chains always rely on uh, redundancy and flexibility to be able to mitigate this type of risk. So redundancy is in the form of uh, having excess capacity in terms of both uh, production and uh, supply assets and potentially uh, logistics assets and uh, taking uh, advantage of them or re-optimizing how you use those assets when a major crisis arises. If there's a severe uh, shortages, uh, both uh, in terms of components, parts, suppliers, and uh, capacity in China, you would like to have supply bases and production bases, as well as uh, the logistic assets that are needed to quickly shift uh, some of the sourcing and production in other parts of the world. And uh, some uh, supply chains uh, do have that. And in a, uh, it is uh, almost uh, paradoxical, but uh, the uh, trade tariffs uh, have helped as uh, many companies had to rethink about their global supply chains and they try to reduce dependency of uh, supply and production uh, on China and they might have already developed alternative sources. Uh, that is uh, for sure the case in the toy industry, an industry that always had to work with a very global portfolio of suppliers and uh, production facilities, and they have diversified their supply and uh, production bases in other parts of uh, Southeast Asia, uh, which also might be somewhat affected, but not at the same level, and definitely uh, Eastern Europe, Turkey, and other parts of the world. Uh, the car industry still has heavy reliance on China. On China. Uh, there might be uh, some availability and some opportunity to shift uh, some of the production in other parts of the world. Combined with the fact that the global demand is reducing, that might give them an opportunity and excess capacity uh, to uh, use facilities in other parts of the world to meet the uh, supply shocks that they will face as a result of the virus. Um, now, the other plant uh, uh, response to this type of risks are inventories, inventories within the supply chain. Supply chains in may, many industries are rather lean, so there's not a lot of inventory, but the fact that the slowdown happened at a period of time where uh, it was anticipated that there will be a slowdown by around two weeks or so, it was also at the end of uh, the uh, fourth uh, fiscal quarter and uh, after the uh, Western holidays. Uh, so the expectation is there is at least uh, three, four weeks of inventory within the, most of the supply chains. In many cases, uh, the expectation is that uh, some of your uh, uh, Asian suppliers do carry uh, safety stock of around uh, two months or so. Now the question is, will you be able to get it out of there and how fast will you get it and will be uh, some bottlenecks within transportation. But inventories within the supply chains, I believe at this uh, point in time, are at a higher level. 
after especially what companies experience with uh, the uh, Japanese uh, tsunami and earthquake, uh, they learn the lesson of uh, try to risk mitigate through inventories and uh, uh, not uh, being extremely lean uh, within their system when uh, there is an anticipation that this form of a crisis uh, might be happening. Uh, this is not exactly a form of a crisis you expect to happen. This is the classic uh, definition of a black swan. You didn't know exactly how it was going to look like or how severe it is going to be. And of course, uh, that implies uh, that you need something more uh, than uh, excess capacity and inventories. You got to have the right contingency plans and you got to have the uh, crisis management approach. I believe that many companies are very good in uh, having developed these kind of business continuity plans. Cisco is quite famous about uh, running uh, dynamic, uh, full transparency of their supply chains and immediately knowing which parts of their supply chain will be affected and they react in a highly dynamic, uh, uh, global type of a way, well diversified uh, uh, supply chain. Walmart is famous with its war rooms and how quickly they respond in this type of crisis. So I believe uh, four of uh, the top uh, global companies that are very well managed, their supply chain managers, the last 20 years, they have become very effective in uh, developing effective contingency plans and being able to manage in the presence of a crisis. But this is a crisis. Uh, this is a black swan that has to be dealt dynamically and through effective crisis management. And I want to be optimistic that they are ready for it. Uh, typical good news, bad news kind of a story, depending on uh, what side uh, you are uh, sitting on. Um, if you have one of the major economies uh, slowing down, and slowing down substantially, potentially, uh, over a period of time, uh, if uh, those are the major consumers of a lot of the commodities, is that uh, oil or copper or aluminum or steel, uh, then uh, you would expect uh, that uh, the prices, the commodity prices, will go down. Uh, you can regulate it with uh, the supply, especially in the oil industry, but uh, the commodity prices will go down, and we have seen that. Already the oil prices have dropped below the $50 a barrel level, uh, and uh, there's a certain drop in other commodities uh, like uh, copper uh, and potentially other commodities uh, as well. Uh, so, and then the, uh, the, uh, so the bad news is for the ones uh, that are are relying on selling the commodities uh, that are going to get the hit. So there are oil companies, and uh, many of them in Texas, that will be affected. And that might drive some bankruptcies in that industry if uh, those uh, prices persist uh, for a while. Um, and uh, on the other hand, if, uh, if you are really using them as inputs uh, in the products uh, that you make and you sell, uh, then it's good news. If you're a driver, this is good news. And uh, for many industries that uh, rely on uh, copper and steel and aluminum, uh, those prices are going to, uh, uh, to, to be favorable uh, for producers. Now, uh, the, uh, the interesting issue is uh, if, uh, uh, if, uh, if, if you're really thinking about uh, the trade tariffs and you th uh, use the trade tariffs as a way to bring uh, production and jobs back in the United States uh, with uh, commodity prices that are much lower and rather excess capacity for some of the commodities in Asia, there will be the tendency for a lot of uh, companies to continue to source outside of the U.S. Uh, many of these products are components that rely on these commodities uh, because uh, the prices might still be favorable even after you account for all the logistics and the trade tariffs. So that might delay the impact that trade tariffs uh, uh, will have in terms of how fast uh, we are going to resource our production and our jobs. I believe that the coronavirus outbreak is going to be a very serious uh, test on the resiliency of uh, global supply chains. Uh, we are in uncharted territory. I don't think there is a comparable event that uh, we can use uh, to estimate impact. Uh, this is what we like to call as a black swan uh, that uh, is coming uh, towards uh, supply chain managers that uh, have to, uh, to address and mitigate and ensure business continuity. 
Uh, SARS uh, is a benchmark we have out there. I don't think that is uh, the exact parallel. Uh, when we account for the tremendous uh, influence of the uh, Chinese economy to the global economy, uh, the extreme and elevated importance of China as a manufacturing hub, not only for commodity goods, but also uh, for technology and goods that are used uh, in uh, higher margin products. And uh, the increased uh, complexity and interdependency of global supply chains with uh, the uh, Chinese assets, uh, both uh, supply bases, production bases, and uh, logistic assets playing an extreme importance in uh, global supply chains. Uh, as I implied, uh, the $60 billion estimated impact of uh, SARS on global supply chains has to be multiplied by at least a factor of five. So we're talking about the $300 billion uh, estimate of impact on global supply chains. Um, it's, uh, it's always when you look at it, uh, this outbreak happened around the Lunar Festival. It's uh, the good news, bad news uh, kind of a story. The good news is we did anticipate the slowdown of uh, Chinese production uh, um, for a week, two weeks, uh, because everybody knew that it takes a little longer and people take longer to go back uh, to their jobs. So inventories were already in the system in anticipation of the slowing down of production. So that, that inventory now is mitigating for a little while the impact of the outbreak uh, within global supply chains. Uh, but at the same time, that um, uh, lunar festival um, slowed down. He has a tremendous impact in terms of retail sales and uh, sales uh, both uh, on the uh, uh, tourism and the airline uh, transportation and other uh, travel related services. And that impact will propagate back to supply chains and uh, have uh, serious uh, implications as well. Uh, the um, uh, interplay between uh, coronavirus and uh, the trade tariffs is something that has not, uh, should not be ignored. So in a certain way, the trade tariffs made uh, global supply chain managers rethink about uh, how dependent they are on uh, the Chinese supply chains. And they have somewhat diversified, and that is good. And they have reduced the dependency, and they're ready to shift uh, and use the flexibility to shift uh, to other supply bases and production resources. And that will help them mitigate the impact of uh, the outbreak. Uh, but at the same time, the coronavirus is slowing down an economy that has made promises uh, to buy a lot of American goods. And if those promises are not realized, uh, first of all, will create an intensity uh, between the countries and uh, potential implications for further tariffs. But at the same time, will propagate into the U.S. supply chains and some of the products that we were hoping that will be bought actually will not be bought within the next two years. Uh, that's something we have to look at. There's good news. Uh, we rethought the dependency on China. There's bad news. Uh, still, the uh, uh, trade deal is out there, and we expect our partner to deliver on it. And right now, it, it is uh, forcing a situation that makes it harder for them to do so. And uh, finally, as uh, a supply chain manager, I'll tell you, when shocks happen in the system, they propagate, and that is what is making it very hard. We're talking about highly interdependent complex systems. Shocks are uh, from the demand side, shocks are from the supply side, and they are going to propagate, and as we always argued, with an amplified way in terms of the impact the further away you move from, from the area of the shock. Uh, so supply chains will fill it, and uh, we'll fill it in other parts of the world. We will fill it in suppliers uh, that are sitting somewhere in Kentucky and have nothing to do with China right now, but uh, quite a lot of their customers or uh, the customers in front of the supply chain are sitting in that region and are heavily affected by the outbreak. Uh, so we all worry about uh, the short-term shortages, and we should, and if they continue for a period of time, we will fill them in other parts of the world. But even in the good news, when finally this thing has been controlled and stopped, uh, the recovery period is going to take longer because we will face all kinds of constraints, capacity constraints, inventory constraints, logistic constraints, and that will elongate uh, how long it will take for the recovery. So if you estimate that it takes uh, eight months uh, to 12 months uh, to get full control of that, then from a supply chain perspective, you should expect that you're going to be feeling uh, some propagation of these kind of shocks for the next two years. 
and of course, hopefully with um, reduced effect over time, but global supply chains are heavily dependent on China, and this is a shock that will test global supply chains.